Massachusetts. Tonight, I'm grateful to be able to share with you the direct impact. Here tonight is living proof of our history and our future. Unparalleled determination, a deep commitment to social justice, an unwavering belief that this was the right thing to do. That is what it took for this grassroots movement called Healthcare for All to grow in strength and stature from its humble but visionary beginning in 1985 to where it is today. Good evening, everyone. My name is Steve Gorey, and I am president of the Board of Directors of Healthcare for All. And it's been my honor to have served on this board for almost 20 years. Through those two decades, I have a unique perspective on what it took to provide quality, affordable, accessible, and culturally competent healthcare for everyone in our Commonwealth, and for what it took to have Healthcare for All recognized as experts in the health policy arena. To build this organization, it took the kind of commitment that runs through the veins of community organizers, unions, and leaders. A kind of commitment that matched that of our forefathers. A commitment that was put into action by people who dream of and work tirelessly for equality among our citizens. And it took an, an extraordinary amount of collaboration between citizen advocates and elected officials. It began with some early heroes in the Massachusetts legislature who could visualize the dream and who were willing to work with the political and organizing experts, leaders who knew how to undertake the massive coalition building that it took to advance such a bold idea. It took work, lots of work, lots of hard work from the ground up to achieve these goals. These advocates knew that both political parties needed to see eye to eye on this vision in order for it to become a reality. And we are very fortunate to have had those visionaries who emerged from both sides of the aisle to champion our cause. In fact, achieving this access to high quality health care has been one of the most successful bipartisan efforts in our legislature's 227 year history. So here we are today, celebrating the success of this historic and ongoing health care campaign, spearheaded by Health Care for All, a success that is living proof that our vision, our efforts, our system of democracy are truly for the people. But it's not enough to pass a law, issue a press release, 
and spread the news of change on a billboard. You have to have an ambitious plan to tell the people in person the profound impact this new legislation could have in their lives. Hi everyone, I'm Mac D'Alessandro, uh, and I'm here to share with you how we took social change out into the streets. Uh, I was the architect of the ambitious canvassing plan uh, that Healthcare for All orchestrated from Springfield to Fall River, from Boston to Lawrence, and many cities and towns in between. We formed a partnership with 11 organizations from across the state to walk from block to block and knock on doors and tell people that affordable, accessible health care was now available to them, regardless of where they worked, or even if they worked, or how much money they could pay. They could now get good health care. Uh, as Amy mentioned, we created a, a, a pretty staggering goal for ourselves uh, to knock on 200,000 doors in 15 weeks. And that was before Snowmageddon. <laughs> so in teams of two and three, 110 canvassers plotted out city streets and country roads, and they set out to educate people face to face. I'll never forget one story from Rudy, a canvasser who arrived at a run-down doorstep in a small town. Just as he was about to knock on the door, uh, two em uh, it opened and two EMTs were pulling out a gentleman laying on a gurney. The man's head had been covered with a sheet. The neighbors were standing there quietly crying as their friend was wheeled away. They told Rudy that he had come too late. The man had been sick but had no health care. Uh, because he could not afford health care. He had departed just before we could tell him that hope had arrived. Despite that tragic occasion, and perhaps even because of that tragedy, our passion for this work grew every day. The canvassers were motivated because they knew the impact that this law could have, not just in their own lives, but in so many other people's lives. And the enthusiastic response they got from the people they spoke with every day fueled them on every step of the way. We organized the largest ethnic media campaign in Massachusetts history, and instead of knocking on 200,000 doors in 15 weeks, we knocked on over 430,000 doors. In the end, thousands of Massachusetts residents enrolled for basic health care, uh, some for the first time, far more than have ever been covered before. The success of our open enrollment campaign is living proof that Health Care for All is a leader in bringing about vital social change. Good evening. My name is Lee Nguyen, and I'm a helpline counselor at Healthcare for All. The Consumer Assistance Helpline is a heartbeat of Healthcare for All. It is a free telephone, voicemail, and email service available to all Massachusetts residents seeking to enroll into healthcare, needing help understanding health policies, or just curious to know about their healthcare options in Massachusetts. For over two decades, the helpline has worked in collaboration with individuals of all ethnic, socioeconomic, geographic, and medical need backgrounds. There are six other dedicated helpline counselors who work side by side with me. Every day we begin our work with our game faces on, usually with a smile on our face, ready to begin our work on the front lines. Some days we are welcomed with dozens of messages from clients in need waiting to speak with us. Our phone, li phone lines have become lifelines for thousands of people and their families. At any given time, you might hear up to three various languages spoken on the helpline. Half of our calls come from Spanish or Portuguese speaking individuals and a growing number from consumers seeking assistance in Mandarin Chinese Haitian Creole, Vietnamese, and Russian, to name a few. 
we receive up to 30,000 calls a year. For some callers, it can be an easy problem fixed in a matter of seconds. But imagine, if you were one of many people calling the helpline, not able to understand an application on your own, uh, severely ill or physically disabled, feeling overwhelmed and alone in the process. That's when our work transforms from a problem that needs fixing into a human being trusting in another human being for help. When I say this, I can't help but to think about Erica. Erica is a client of mine that I'm working with who is in the room tonight. She is a mother, a wife, and a daughter. Erica is in dire need of a heart transplant and has been waiting for months for a new heart. She's in jeopardy of losing her health insurance and in turn would be removed off of the transplant list she is currently at the top of. For someone burdened with stress, she is light, always laughing when we speak, and continuously kind and grateful for all the help that I'm giving her. But she doesn't know that I'm just as grateful for her. People like Erica is what keeps us mo motivated to continue the work we do on the helpline every day. For our callers, we provide fair, unbiased, and accurate knowledge that brings a sense of security and stability. For many, it will be the first time they have ever seen a doctor or their child has been able to see a dentist. We like to be the last call a person has to make. We pride ourselves in that, and it really means the world to us. I believe that our helpline counselors are living proof that at Healthcare for All, we are not only changing lives, we are saving them as well. Hello, my name is Lev Goldman, and I am 13 years old. Tonight, I speak with gratitude for the million kids in Massachusetts who are covered by health insurance. And I speak with sorrow for the 10,000 who are still waiting for that basic human right. My story begins in fifth grade. I developed some specific anxieties around food, travel, and separation. These got in the way of doing everyday things, like riding in a car or eating in a restaurant. I couldn't go out on field trips, stay overnight at friends' houses, or even travel with my family. I also spent a lot of time in the nurse's office due to not feeling well. My parents really wanted to help and took me to several therapists. Finally, we found the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Program at Mass General Hospital and the tools it taught me have made a huge difference. I can now travel, stay overnight away from home, and now I am not limited by anxiety and do not walk through my everyday life with fear. I'm not even afraid of public speaking, which is the number one fear of people in this room right now. What if I hadn't had health care coverage? What if I hadn't been able to find the right doctor in the right hospital to help me with my anxiety? I know that I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of things I did this year, like travel on overnight school trips and compete in a model United Nations in New York City. Without treatment, I would probably be pretty miserable, limited by my fear. Sadly, I know that other kids out there are still struggling with anxiety and other mental health problems, unable to get the help they need. We need to remove stigma around mental health problems, including anxiety, depression, and other mental health illnesses. People with mental health issues need help to get effective treatment, to heal and find new ways of thinking. And no one should have to suffer because they can't afford doctor visits or medications. Every kid deserves access to good health care when they are in trouble, and I am living proof of that. Thank you, Health Care for All, and thank you to everyone here for helping people just like me.